Parasites include protozoa and helminths. We'll first discuss protozoa. Protozoa are unicellular, non-fungal eukaryotes. Some have life forms that alternate between a proliferative feeding form called trophozoites and a dormant form called cyst. Cysts can withstand very harsh conditions, such as extreme temperatures and periods without nutrition. The cyst form allows parasites to survive outside of their host and transfer from one host to another when found in feces or water. Let's go over some of the protozoa that you should know. The facts are broken down into categories that will hopefully help you remember what kind of infections these protozoa cause. The first category includes protozoa that affect the GI system by causing diarrhea. This group includes Giardia lamblia, Entamoeba histolytica, and Cryptosporidium. The first protozoan is Giardia lamblia, a single-celled parasite. Giardia lamblia has a prominent ventral sucking disc and flagella that provide a characteristic appearance, as shown here. You can easily recognize Giardia by the fact that it appears to have a face, with two prominent eyes and sometimes even a smile. Patients typically ingest Giardia cysts from mountain spring waters, so you might suspect it in patients who have gone camping or hiking. Half of patients remain asymptomatic. However, symptomatic disease can range from a self-limited acute diarrhea to severe chronic diarrhea. In the small intestine, ingested cysts develop into trophozoites that use their sucking discs to attach themselves to the duodenum and impair duodenal function. This leads to fat malabsorption, with fat ending up in the stool. Therefore, buzzwords to remember for giardiasis are that it causes a very foul-smelling fatty diarrhea. Treatment is metronidazole. The next protozoa is Entamoeba histolytica, which causes an infection called amoebiasis. It is spread by cysts in fecally contaminated food or water and causes bloody diarrhea or liver abscesses with right upper quadrant pain. Entamoeba is capable of ingesting red blood cells, therefore it might be possible to see red blood cells within the cytoplasm of the parasite, as shown in the figure here. This figure shows entamoeba in trophozoate form, with ingested red blood cells as black dots within the cytoplasm. Remembering that entamoeba ingests red blood cells may help you to recall that this protozoa causes bloody diarrhea or dysentery. Entamoeba can also cause single or multiple abscesses in the liver by penetrating into portal vessels and entering the liver. The abscess is filled with acellular proteinaceous debris, which has a reddish-brown appearance, often likened to anchovy paste. Entamoeba can also produce ulcers in the colon. These ulcers are described as having a flask shape because of its narrow neck and broad base, which you can see in this image here. Cryptosporidium is a protozoa causing watery diarrhea and transmitted by cysts in fecally contaminated water supplies. In immunocompromised hosts such as AIDS patients, this diarrhea can be very severe, often leading to unrelenting and life-threatening diarrhea. In immunocompetent hosts, the diarrhea is self-limited and mild. There is no treatment for this infection, so filter treatments of water sources is important in preventing this infection. Now let's move on to the protozoa which cause CNS infections. Toxoplasma gondii, Nigleria phalari, and Trypanosoma brucei. Toxoplasma gondii is a T in torches, a mnemonic for remembering infections that cross the placenta and which we will discuss later. A neonate born with toxoplasmosis will present with chorioretinitis, hydrocephalus, and intracranial calcifications. This is why pregnant women should avoid cats, whose feces will often carry the cyst form of toxoplasma gondii. Also watch out for toxoplasmosis infections in HIV patients who will present with brain abscesses. Remember the phrase ring-enhancing lesion, which are buzzwords to describe how toxoplasmosis abscesses appear on CT and MRI imaging. Treat with sulfadiazine and pyrimethamine. Nagleria phalari causes a fatal meningoencephalitis in patients who have been swimming in freshwater lakes. The protozoan enters the nose, penetrates the cribriform plate, and enters into the brain. There is no treatment for this devastating infection, but the literature shows that amphotericin has been effective in a few survivors. African sleeping sickness is caused by our third protozoa, Trypanosoma brucei, which includes three subspecies. Trypanosoma brucei, Trypanosoma gambiense, and Trypanosoma rhodiensiens. African sleeping sickness is caused by a third protozoa, Trypanosoma brucei, which includes three subspecies, Trypanosoma brucei, Trypanosoma gambiense, and Trypanosoma rhodesiens. 
In African sleeping sickness, or African trypanosomiasis, the protozoan invades the lymphatic system, causing enlarged lymph nodes, which are often tremendous in size. Recurring fever due to antigenic variation is also seen. Left untreated, the infection can enter a second phase characterized by severe somnolence, fatigue, and even coma. Therefore, remember this protozoan causes sleeping sickness and is endemic to sub-Saharan Africa. Trypanosoma brucei is transmitted by the tsetse fly, which is known for its painful bite. The two protozoa causing hematologic infections are Plasmodium and Babesii. Members of the Plasmodium genus, P. vivax, P. ovale, P. falciparum, and P. malariae, are the causes of malaria, a mosquito-borne infection widespread in tropical regions such as Asia and Africa. Malaria is characterized by cyclic fever, headache, anemia, and splenomegaly. How often the cyclic fever appears is often related to which Plasmodium species is involved. P. vivax and ovale typically cause fever every two days, which is known as the tertian fever. P. malariae will cause fever that occurs every three days in a quartan cycle, and P. falciparum has a severe irregular fever that often occurs every day as a continuous fever. Remember that P. falciparum is the most severe malarial infection because it can involve the brain, kidneys, and lungs. P. vivax and ovale are unique in that there is a dormant form of the parasite, known as a hypnozoid, that can hide out in the liver and reinfect the patient at another time. Therefore, you must add primaquin to your antibiotic regimen when specifically treating for P. vivax or P. ovale to target these dormant forms. Plasmodium has a life cycle which involves the liver and blood and is illustrated in this figure. First, an Anopheles mosquito transmits plasmodium to a human when it takes a blood meal from a human host. Plasmodium sporozoites enter the bloodstream and travel to the liver, where they infect hepatocytes. The sporozoites will spend some time there, multiplying into merozoites, until they eventually rupture the hepatocytes and escape back into the blood. The merozoites are now able to infect red blood cells, where they develop into ring forms known as trophozoites and schizonts. Sexual forms, known as gametocytes, are also produced, which can continue the life cycle when taken up by another mosquito during a blood meal. Plasmodium infections are diagnosed by examination of blood smears, looking for the classic ring form of the plasmodium trophozoite. This image here shows a P. ovale trophozoite in the center. Blood smear can also show the mature schizon form of plasmodium. This image shows a P. vivax schizon containing 12 to 24 merozoites. Chloroquine used to be the first-line agent for prophylaxis and treatment of malaria. However, in cases of resistance against chloroquine, the drug mefloquine is used as an alternative for prophylaxis and treatment of chloroquine-resistant malaria. And again, what drug should we use to prevent relapse caused by P. ovale and P. vivax? That's right, primaquine. The next protozoa that causes hematological infection is Babesii. It is transmitted by the Exotis tick. Do you remember what other organism is transmitted by this same tick? That would be Borrelia burgdorferi, the spirochete that causes Lyme disease. Therefore, it is possible for patients to become infected by both Borrelia and Babesia from the same tick. In babesiosis, expect to see fever and hemolytic anemia. Diagnosis is made by doing a blood smear and seeing what is known as the Maltese cross form of the organism within red blood cells. The Maltese cross is formed by four merozoites asexually budding but attached together to form a cross-like figure. You may also see the ring form of Babesii within red blood cells which can sometimes be confused for plasmodium. Treat this infection with quinine or clindamycin. Protozoa causing visceral infections are next, which include Trypanosoma cruzi and Leishmania donovani. Trypanosoma cruzi is endemic to South America and causes Chagas disease. This is a disease characterized by dilated cardiomyopathy, megacolon, and megaesophagus. Just think that it makes organs bigger in size, just like Tom Cruise, Cruise for Cruzy, is bigger than life. Trypanosoma cruzi is transmitted by the reduviate bug, which is a painless bite. Remember we just said that Trypanosoma brucei is transmitted by the tsetse fly, which has what kind of bite? Right, a painful bite. Treat Trypanosoma cruzi with nifertamox. The second protozoa that causes visceral infections is Leishmania donovani. Although a cutaneous form of Leishmania is more common, you should know the visceral form is more severe and deadly. 
This occurs when the parasite moves to organs such as the liver, spleen, and bone marrow, and left untreated will result in death of the host. Typical symptoms include spiking fever, hepatosplenomegaly, and pancytopenia. The protozoan is transmitted by the sandfly, and diagnosis is made by directly visually amastigote in splenic or bone marrow aspirate. Here you can see an example of the amastigotes in this picture. Treat with sodium stiboglucanate. Finally, the last protozoan causes a sexually transmitted disease. This is Trichomonas vaginalis, which can cause vaginitis, characterized by foul-smelling greenish discharge, itching, and burning. Don't confuse this with Gardnerella vaginalis, the gram-negative bacteria that causes vaginosis, characterized by foul discharge, usually described as gray and fishy smelling. Is Gardnerella an STD? It is not, which also differentiates it from Trichomonas, a protozoan that cannot survive outside human hosts because it doesn't form cyst. Diagnose Trichomonas if you see moving trophozoites on a wet mount of the vaginal discharge, which are illustrated here. Both Gardnerella and Trichomonas can be treated with metronidazole.